Kia ora team, welcome to your neck and shoulder reset. Thank you so much for choosing to practice with me. Um, it's an absolute blessing to be here with you, sharing this time and the space uh, with you today. So for this session, you will need a strap or something similar and a yoga block or something similar. <laughs> Um, so grab those items now. I am sitting on my block at the moment and you're going to get yourself comfortable. So you could sit on a chair for this first part of the class. If you know that sitting uh, cross leg or uh, like I am on my heels with a block underneath or some cushions, if you know that that's not going to be comfortable for you, pop up onto a chair, feet flat on the floor and we will begin. So this class is perfect for you if you've woken up with a bit of a crick in the neck, if you've been driving or sleeping funny, pain between the shoulder blades, um, anything like that. So let's get stuck in. You're going to take your strap and you're going to wrap it around your body. So the two ends cross over at the front. And I want you to have it so it's sitting just above your belly button or where your lower rib cage is. So you can use your hands, maybe figure out where that is and also the back ribs. So wrapping around your lower rib cage, holding it in both hands, shoulders are nice and soft so you're not clenching up like this. So let your neck be nice and long, let your spine be tall and just relax. You can bring the hands down onto the thighs if that works for you or you can just hold like this. So I want you to pull the strap gently so that you can feel the circumference of your rib cage. So you're getting that little bit of feedback from the strap letting you know where that pressure and that resistance is. So make any final adjustments and then when you're ready, just closing down your eyes nice and lightly, soften your face, relax your jaw, sitting bones are heavy, spine is supported. And I get you to draw your chin just slightly in towards your throat, not down, just in. So you're almost just retracting your chin toward your body. Good, now let your awareness come inwards. Making a connection to your breathing. And we'll just start by observing the breath. Notice if your shoulders have started to hike up. Allow everything to soften. Now as you breathe naturally, just watching the breath, following the breath with curiosity, with your full attention, just noticing which parts of your body are gently moving as you breathe. You might notice how the shoulders gently rise and fall movement in the chest, in the belly. Noticing the quality of your breath. Is it quite short or shallow? Are you breathing through your nose or your mouth? It's becoming really interested in how you're breathing. We'll start to take the breath a little bit deeper. So breathing in through the nose, evenly in through both nostrils. Filling up the chest and the belly, allow the rib cage to expand. Spine grows taller, body fills with prana, with breath. And then as you exhale, relax and soften. Let the shoulder blades slide a little further down your back. 
So I want you to take these slow, smooth, gentle, deep breaths. Making them as even as you can. You're not straining or forcing. Keeping them soft. And pull the strap just a little bit tighter. And now I want you to imagine that as you breathe in, you're breathing into the strap. So the whole of your rib cage is expanding out in all directions, 360 degrees. That strap grows bigger and wider in all directions. And then that strap narrows and tightens as you exhale, breathing out all of the air. Paying special attention to the back of your body, breathing into the back of the strap, expanding through the back half of your lungs, back rib cage, the back portion of your diaphragm muscle. Breathing even into the back of your heart space, right in between those shoulder blades. Can you fill that space with air? And take three more like this. No rush. Beautiful, finishing off that last round and gently releasing the strap down. Just pop it to the side, you can open your eyes, come back into the space and we'll just bring the fingertips to the shoulders and give those shoulders a nice roll. So you're bringing the elbows forward to touch or as close as you can and then circling them back around. Woo. Did you hear that? You might get some nice little clicks. That's not a bad thing, by the way. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> so really squeeze the shoulder blades at the back like you're trying to touch your elbows together and then drawing the elbows as close as you can together at the front. And then we'll reverse that motion. So coming back first and then forwards. Just notice if one wants to go higher than the other or faster than the other. Try to keep them really uh, symmetrical. Just getting left and right side of the body to work together. Awesome. Then just release your hands down onto your thighs. We're gonna test the rotation in the neck first, just to give us a baseline reference point. So keeping your chin slightly tucked in, almost like you're gonna make a bit of a double chin, and then you're turning straight to the right. So you're not tilting down or up, just rotating to the right. And just noticing how far you can go, taking the eye gaze back, and then back through center and over to the left. Again, taking the eye gaze around, just noticing how far you can go. If there's any stuckness there, resistance, discomfort, one more time to the right. And back through center to the left. Wonderful. Come back to the center and then drop the right ear towards the right shoulder as you breathe in circling back and around, opening up through the throat, over to that left ear, and dropping chin to the chest, and circling all the way around, tracing a semicircle across the chest before you open back up again. 
So nice big slow circles. Drawing them with your nose. Making those circles as even as you can. And then we'll go the other way, changing direction. Paying attention to if that movement is smooth. Does it get stuck anywhere? Last one. Keeping it slow, not speeding up. Beautiful, back to the center. And take the left hand down next to you on the floor or on the chair. You're gonna press down through the earth with the fingertips or the palm, drawing that left shoulder down and away from you as you tip your right ear to your right shoulder. So feel that deep stretch down the side neck muscles. And back to the center nice and slowly. Other side, pressing right hand to the floor, drawing that shoulder down and away from you and tipping the left ear towards the left shoulder. Good, back to the center. Release your hands either side of your body. Spread the fingers nice and wide, palms open. Breathe in, sweep the arms up. Keep the shoulders down as you bring the palms together. Press the hands in towards each other. A little bit of firmness here. Feel the shoulders activate. And interlace your hands, your fingers. And then press the palms towards the sky. Good, take the hands, keep them clasped together and take them to the base of your head, the top of your neck. So you're cradling the base of the skull and the hands. As you inhale, I want you to arch your spine, lift the chest, open the heart, open the elbows, press the tailbone back. So full arch through the spine. Then as you exhale, we're gonna reverse that movement, bringing the elbows together, starting to round the spine. Gently pressing the head down, tucking that tailbone underneath you, allowing your spine to round. Then, as you inhale, expanding, opening up, blossoming, blooming, and exhale round. So, it's like a seated cat cow. We're going to do three more of these. give you a side view for anyone that's not sure for these last two. Good, coming back to the center. Now, for my next trick, I'm gonna take the palm of your hand and place it just to the right of your forehead, not on the temple, on the hard part of your forehead. Again, draw the chin in towards you. Now we're gonna rotate to the left with the whole head, but this time you're pressing with a little bit of force using your hand and you're resisting that pressure with your head, yeah? So like your hands trying to turn your head around, 
but your head is resisting. Your head's trying to not let your hand press it round. Then once you reach there, same thing the other way. So now your head is trying to come back to the center, but your hand is not letting it. Okay? So press with your hand, use your hand to turn your head, but resist. Let your head and neck fight to not turn. And then same, let the head win to come back to center, but resist with the hand. I want you to do that three more times to the left. Nice and slow. Keep the chin tucked in so your neck's in a nice straight line. Good, then when you've done those last three, no rush, take your time, we're gonna to move to the other side. So left hand will come to the left side of your forehead, keeping that chin tucked in, using your hand to turn your head, but letting your head fight. So resisting that movement, and then using the strength of your neck to rotate the head back to face forward, but let your hand try to resist. Good. Let your hand win. Let your head win. So we've got two opposing forces happening, creating resistance, putting some load through the muscle, activating, switching it on, making it feel safe. You've got two more this side. Might look a bit weird, but if this is your first class with me, <laughs> You'll soon find out a lot of the stuff that we do looks a bit weird, but it works really well. Good. Coming back to the center, nice and slow. Good, release down, give your shoulders a little roll. And then finally, you're gonna take your fingers to your ears, and I want you to massage your ears. So give them a little squeeze. Roll the flesh in between your fingers and like your whole ears. So get like right into all the cartilage parts. Right into those bits behind the back of the ears where it joins into your head. You can be quite firm. earlobes good now release we're going to test our rotation again so chin in and now rotate your head to the right back to the center and to the left hopefully you should have a lot more movement there, a lot more range. Beautiful. So if you're on your chair, you can stay on your chair or you can hop off and come to the floor. If you're sitting down, come up to stand on your knees. Give those feet a little tap behind you. Get the blood flowing back to the uh, lower extremities. And then you're gonna take your left hand either to your right rib cage or your right shoulder just depending on where it feels most supportive so without moving your body turning your body at all you're going to circle the right arm around so cross it in front of you palm facing in as far as you can diagonally in front of you then it comes up by your ear you let it come back as far as you can and then you're going to rotate so that your thumb points down then sweeping around again so crossing in front of your body, up over your head, as far back as you can go, and then rotate around. I feel like my ears are really red now. <laughs> Good, so really slow. And you're making these circles as big as you can. So you're taking the shoulder through its full possible range of motion. You're not turning your body 
and the arm's not swinging around, it should feel like there's actually quite a lot of resistance there. Let's go the other way. So we're moving back first. So lifting the arm up as far as it can go with the thumb pointing down. And then you'll spin, externally rotate, open the palm and come up and over, cross down in front of you. Back. Up. Across and down. Two more. Nice work, relax. Same thing on the other side. So bring that right hand to the left rib cage or the left shoulder, same thing again. We're not moving the body. When I say we're not rotating, we're also not arching into our spine, yeah? So try to keep your ribs in and down so that when you're lifting up, you're not doing this. You're not leaning back or swaying back to get the motion. So my body is completely still. I'm crossing the arm in front of me. I'm bringing it up by my ear. I'm not arching my back, circling my arm behind me as much as I can. When I can't anymore, I spin my thumb down and around. Nice and slow. Good, let's go the other way, taking those circles back as far as you can before you open the palm, thumb facing up. Again, make sure you're not arching, spine stays neutral, and keep breathing. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Good, last one. Beautiful, take your strap, hold it out in front of you, nice and wide, draw those shoulders down. It's gonna come to sit down on my heels, but you can stay um, as you are on your knees or on your chair, whatever is best for you. So shoulder blades down, and you're going to inhale, open up, take the strap behind you, and then exhale to bring it back down, okay? So opening up through the chest and shoulders. Don't let the shoulders come up by your ears. And again, try to get the arms working at the same time. So you're not kind of going one and then the other, or one's not coming up and the other one's doing something else. So really mindful of your movement here, inhaling to go back and exhaling to come forward. Keep going. If it feels too easy, I want you to take your hands closer together. And if it feels too difficult and you're getting stuck and all cramped up around your shoulders, I want you to take your hands further apart, wider, okay? So three more of those, moving with your breath. And again, if you can, as you open up through the shoulders, try not to arch through the back to get that opening. We just wanna work into the shoulders. So you're keeping that rib to hip connection at the front, keeping the core solid and the spine stable as we just work through the shoulder girdle. And when you've completed your last one of those three, just pop your strap down to the side. We're gonna come onto our hands and knees. Coming into tabletop. So your hands are underneath your shoulders. Fingers are spread nice and wide and we're gripping the ground gently with those fingertips. Pouring a little bit of the weight forward into your fingertips so you're not just kind of dumping down into your wrists. Really use the fingers. Okay, so we're gonna go through the four different motions of the shoulder blades now starting with protraction and retraction. So imagining you've got an empty can in between your shoulder blades, the back of your body. I want you to let your chest sink towards the floor in between your hands, keeping your arms straight 
and allow your shoulder blades to slide together across your back, imagining that you're squashing that can, squishing that can. And now press the floor away, keep the arms straight, keep the spine still, we're not doing cat-cow, and spread your shoulder blades nice and wide, releasing that can, okay? So I'll show you on the wall if you're not 100% sure, it can take a little bit of time to connect with this movement. So, squeeze shoulder blades together and press shoulder blades apart. So all that's moving are my shoulder blades. Squeeze them together, press them apart, separate them as much as you can. Good, so let's do that five more times. Some people call these um, scapular push-ups, shoulder blade push-ups. Try not to overthink it. Um, just have a little experiment. For some people it will come straight away. Others might need a little bit of time just to create that mind to muscle connection in the body. Beautiful. From here, spin your pinky fingers out and around towards you so that your fingertips are facing towards your knees. The closer your fingers are to your knees, the easier the stretch. The further away you walk them, the deeper the stretch. So we're just getting into the wrists and forearms. And you can play around with leaning forwards, leaning back. Just see how that feels. Playing with that distribution of weight. Good, and then coming gently to the backs of the hands. So bring the weight closer towards you. Very little weight through the hands here. Just a little bit of a stretch to the backs of the wrists. So my hands are just like this on the floor. Good, spin them back around, plant them down. Pressing the floor away, tucking those toes, shifting those sitting bones nice and high, coming into downward facing dog. Okay, so just notice what's happening with the positioning of your shoulders here. Are we scrunched up? Are we too narrow with our hands? Take your hands a little bit wider and this allows for our carrying angle. I'm gonna make another video on carrying angle. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you can check that out after. So hands a little wider than your perceived shoulder width. Spread the fingers wide, use the fingertips. Now we're gonna play with depression and elevation of the shoulders. So feel free to just have a little walk out in your down dog first. Sit up and land in a down dog that feels comfortable for you. Keep those ribs tucked in. Bend the knees if you need to. And then I want you to shrug your shoulders all the way up towards your ears. And then I want you to squeeze them back down towards your hips, towards your tailbone. Slide them down your back. Good, now press the floor away. Shrug your shoulders up towards you, towards your ears. So you've got no neck, and then squeeze them back down, making your neck as long as you possibly can. Again, let's do this three more times. Press away, and down, press away. Squeeze them down, squeeze underneath the armpits. Press away, and down. Beautiful, lower to your knees. We'll come back into a child's pose, toes together. Let the hips soften down towards the heels. And I want you to uh, lift the palms of the hands so that you're up on your fingertips like two little tents, two little teepees. And then just give your shoulders a little bit of a shimmy, pressing the armpits down towards the earth one at a time. Relaxing the head and the neck. And just let the body kind of melt towards the earth. Doesn't matter if the hips aren't all the way back towards the heels, just finding a place to land where your body will allow you to today. Where your body feels comfortable and supported. Good. 
You can release the palms to the floor, relax the arms, and just roll across your forehead a few times. It's from one side of your forehead to the other. Good, let's extend into puppy pose from here. So you're lifting your hips up so they are on top of your knees, stacked above your knees again, walking the hands forward. And melting your chest down to the earth, leaving your butt sticking up in the air. So kind of like a child's pose, but you're not sinking the hips back, the hips are elevated. Nice big opening through the chest. Might rest the forehead down on the floor or maybe on a block. Or if you're quite open, you might want to rest the chin down on the earth. Well, we're going to activate this pose now. So rather than arching the back and having the ribs flare out, I want you to activate the muscles underneath your armpit. So press the arms into the floor. Imagine that you're trying to squeeze your armpits towards each other and then draw your ribs in. Tuck your tailbone under slightly. Breathe. Good, you're gonna bend the elbows, press into the elbows, bring your chest forward and release your body down to the earth. Let your arms rest beside you. You can bring your head onto your block here if you like. Right ear to the block or to the floor and just let your arms release down. Take a couple of breaths here. Breathing into the back of your body. Feeling the resistance of the floor beneath the rib cage and the belly at the front of your body. Breathing into the side rib cage, expanding out laterally sideways. And we'll finish with a little bit of yummy fascia release. So just slide up onto your forearms, onto your elbows. And you're going to take your block onto its second level. Or if you have an alternative item, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> so you're going to come onto your right hip, knees bent. And then bring your body over the block so that the pointy edges of your block are pressing into the muscles at the back of your armpit. So I'll show you. So these muscles here, the serratus and the, the top of the lats, the back of the shoulder here, that meaty tender part, there's a lot of pressure points under here. So we're going to try and release a little bit of tension using the block. So take your time to find a place where you can just be still and it should feel kind of like a tender, achy sensation when you get the edge of the block in the right place. Just using that right hand to cradle the side of the head so you can relax as much as possible. Just breathing into that space under the armpit. 
The breath mechanics are so intricately linked to the shoulders, the neck, the spine, the back. So when we work like this to expand the ribs, improve breathing, free up the neck, the shoulders, it kind of has this really holistic effect and a knock-on effect or a ripple effect on everything. You might even find that your lower back also feels freer after this because we are releasing tension and creating strength through the neck and shoulders so the lower back doesn't have to do so much work. Let the full body weight rest down onto that block. If you have a cork block like me, it's gonna be really intense. Also for this guys, actually, if you don't have a block, you can use a ball, a massage ball or a um, even a golf ball or a baseball, cricket ball, should I say, um, or even just a tennis ball. Good, let's change sides. Coming up nice and gently and take the block to the other end of the mat or just flip over, taking that left elbow over the top of the block. You're on your left hip and you're taking your time to find that sweet spot at the back of the armpit. You'll find it. It'll be very tender. Ooh, a dull kind of ache. Also might feel quite nice. Just breathing here, relaxing the rest of your body. Hmm, almost like a little shavasana in a very strange position. Awesome. Slowly coming up and off that block, we're going to lie down on the back and take the block into the occiput. So you want to have it again on the same uh, second level, but horizontally. And you want to hold onto it, find the right angle. So the edge of the block is pressing into the very base of your skull where the very top of your neck turns into bone. So there's a ridge there where all the little insertions of muscles, tendons, ligaments, oh, and they get so tight and so tender. So once you find that ridge, I'm going to get you to roll your head across the edge of the block, pausing when you find any super tender points. You can press quite hard here. Oh, mama. <laughs> if you haven't quite found it, you can take your fingers to the base of your skull and press. It's where the soft part turns hard, okay? If you ever get massages, they'll always dig their fingers and their thumbs into the spot. Nice and slow, all the way to the ear and all the way back. And you can keep going like this for as long as you like, or you can bring yourself down and have a nice little rest on your block. 
and just let the shoulders and the neck be still and quiet for a moment, letting the breath go, letting all effort go. And whenever you feel ready, just rolling to your side and coming back up to sit. You may stay in a version of Shavasana for as long as you like. And otherwise, this has been our neck and shoulder reset. And I hope that you feel really nice and free and strong and mobile around your neck and shoulder area. Enjoy the rest of your day or your evening and I can't wait to see you next time.